welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving lead code problem number 11, container with most water. Before we get into the question prompt, please subscribe to the channel and like the video. The engagement really helps with the YouTube algorithm and thus helps the channel grow. All right, you are given an integer array height of length n. There are n vertical lines drawn such that the two endpoints of the ith line are i0 and 0 height of i. Find two lines that together with the x-axis form a container such that the container contains the most water. Return the maximum amount of water a container can store, and you may not slant the container. So let's look at a basic example where we're given the height arrays of 1, 8, 6, 2, 5, 4, 8, 7, and 3. So basically, we're asked to find the container that would store the most water. And here they've kind of visually given us the container, but we need to find it. So the amount of water we can store is basically going to be the area that we can make with the bars, right? So in our case, our solution is 49. Why? Because this, the distance between these two bars on this x-axis here is 7, and the height that bounds the container is 7. So obviously 7 times 7 is going to be 49, which is the best that we can do here. Now, let's think about some of the other containers we can form. And we're, let's notice one thing. So let's say we pick the first height, which is 1, and the eighth height, which is, or sorry, the second height, which is 8. The container we can form is obviously bound by the smaller of the two heights. Right, so the highest container we can form is up to here, and we can trap this much water. Obviously, we can't go higher than that because it would just spill over the side, so it has to be bound basically by the height of the smaller of the two bars. So we basically want to find two bars such that the, the area is maximized. And basically, the way that we're going to do this is we're going to have to be, I mean, one way we could do this is try all of the possible combinations. We could try the first bar with the second bar, the first bar with the third bar, uh, the second bar, the first bar with this third one, with the fourth, and so on and so forth. Or we can realize that as soon as we find uh, a better bar than one that we've ha found before uh, in terms of height, we can actually... Uh, ignore smaller ones because obviously we want the highest bars possible that are also the farthest away right because the highest bars will give us the highest height for our um, box here and then the, the width here will give us the longest length which will give us the highest area so we want to maximize the height and we want to maximize this width here right even though this bar here and this bar here are technically the highest bars and they both have a height of eight because they are what? One, two, three, four, five spaces apart. We only get eight times five, which is 40. But these bars, right? This is a seven and an eight. So obviously we take the smaller of the two, which is the seven, but there's seven apart. So obviously seven times seven is 49. So the trick to this problem is basically finding this area, um, which is going to maximize, right? And we already talked about the way that you could do it by trying all possible solutions, but that's really inefficient. We basically want to do this in an efficient way, and we want to keep track of the highest bar we've seen on the left side and the highest bar we've seen on the right side. And we're going to use those to calculate our area, and we're going to move our left and right pointers uh, towards each other until basically they meet at which point we're done because we will have explored the entirety of these options so what we're going to do and let me just erase everything is going to be uh let me erase more okay cool oops i lost my pen here so we're going to say that uh, left is going to be zero which represents that we're starting on the left here and we're going to say that right is going to be the length of our heights minus one which is this last index so we're going to say right equals the length of height uh, minus one and what we're going to do is we're going to say while uh, left is less than right what we want to do is we want to get the current left height so at this case it's one in this case it's seven and what we want to do here is we want to calculate the area that would be formed by taking these two as our box 
So obviously we're bound by the, the smaller height. So basically our box here would be a height of one, but a width of eight, right? So our current best answer is going to be eight. And we'll update that in a, in a variable holding our solution, right? Then what we're going to do is we want to basically now try to find a better bar for the left and the right. Since the left is less than the right, we're going to try to find a bigger bar for the left because this uh, larger one could be a potential good solution. So we're actually going to move our left up by one. So now the left is pointing at this bar and now we get the height of eight and we get seven. And again, we can calculate our box based on the highest, uh, the lowest point of the two times the difference in the width between them. So now we get an answer of 49, which is better than our old answer and we can update it. And we're going to do this until, like I said, left is less than right. If the left bar is currently greater than the right bar, then we move the right pointer to the left. If the left bar is less than the right bar, then we move the left pointer to the right. And when they meet, basically this will no longer be true and we can break out of our loop and simply return our answer. I won't walk through the entire example because it's quite tedious, but you get the idea. And when we get to the um, code editor, we'll write it out and explain it line by line, but it's really quite simple. It's only about 15 lines of code. So at this point, let's actually transition over to the code editor and type this out. I will see you there. Back in the code editor, let's write this up. Remember that we're returning the maximum water that we can basically store in our container. So let's create a variable for that and we'll call it max area, right? And we'll initially set it to zero because we haven't found any area yet. Now remember, we need two pointers. The left pointer is going to be set to zero and the right pointer is going to be set to the length of height minus one. Now, if you recall, we have our while loop, which says that while left is less than right, what we're going to do is we're going to extract the height of the bar at pointer L and we're going to extract the height of the bar at pointer R. So we're going to say L height, oops, L height is going to equal to height of L and we're going to say right height is going to equal to height of R. Cool. So now we have those heights and we want to calculate the area that we can get. So we're going to say the current area is going to be, let's calculate the actual uh, length of them. So remember that our left and right represent the indexes or basically the position on the X axis. So the difference between them is going to be right minus left, which is going to give us our width. And remember that the height of our container is bound by the smaller height of the two, because obviously if we use the bigger one, then we would overflow water. So we have to use the smaller height. So we're going to say the minimum of left height, oops, left height and right height. Okay, cool. So now what we want to do is we want to check whether the current area that we just computed is actually a better solution than the maximum that we found so far. So we're going to say max area is now going to be the maximum of whatever the current max is and the current area that we just calculated. If our current area is a best solu better solution, then max area will be updated. Otherwise, it will stay the same. OK, now we need to move our left pointer uh, or our right pointer, right? Obviously, we don't want to just get stuck in one place. So what we want to do is we want to say if the left height is actually greater than the right height, then we want to try to find a higher bar on the right side. So we're going to move the right pointer down by one. Otherwise, if the left height is less than or equal to the right height, we're just going to move the left uh, up by one. It doesn't matter which side you have the less than or equal to on as long as um, you have the general idea that if the left bar is higher than the right, then the right moves down. Otherwise, the left moves up. So we're going to do that uh, while left is less than right. And at the end, all we need to do is simply return our max area. So let me just run this, make sure I haven't accidentally misspelled anything and looks good. We can submit it. So once we get our solution here, we can see that it's accepted and we're good to go. So let's think about what the time and space complexity of our algorithm here is. For the time, you can see that we, at the worst case, we're going to have to basically parse the entirety of the array, right? 
our left and our right pointer would meet in the middle, which means that we would parse the left side of the array and the right side of the array, which means that we'd basically parse the entirety of the array. So because of this, it's going to be a big O of N operation for the time. And for the space, as you can see, we have not defined any data structures here uh, for our solution. All we do is have a few variables, but these are constant space allocations. So our space complexity is going to be big O of one. And that is going to be how you solve container with most water, relatively straightforward, a really good problem for learning how to work with the two pointer approach, which this one does quite simply. So definitely one to know if you're first learning leak code. Anyway, that was the solution to the question. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and a comment. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you want to see more content like this and you want to learn something about system design, then consider dropping a sub to the channel. I have a lot of videos on leak code questions and I'm also working on a system design series. So stay tuned for that. Uh, and subscribing to the channel is the best way to make sure you don't miss those videos. Anyway, I'm going to stop blabbing now. I'm going to let you go. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you for watching. Bye.